Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video is going to be one of the videos which is being requested by one of my viewers. Um, uh, he commented that make a video on OFDM and I've been wanting to make this video for a while and uh, the reason uh, I, I mean and I've been working on this particular video trying to understand different concept associated with orthogonal frequency division multiple axis implementation using Guru Radio. Uh, so uh, let's let's get into this particular video and how you can make a transmitter and receiver. So in this video I'll be using a file source to transmit a audio file mp3 file and we're going to try to receive that signal. So the main idea about this particular uh, GNU radio tutorial is to understand the properties of OFDM transmitter uh, and an OFDM receiver. That's the main idea behind this particular video. This 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 particular uh, tutorial and how everything comes together to form OFDM transceiver system. This is one of the key technology uh, for 4G and 5G systems uh, because um, you know uh, because you're dividing your carrier into multiple a smaller subcarrier and each subcarrier is being modulated uh, and you can use different modulation schemes using this. So let's let's get into this flow graph. So the idea is this, that you have a file source that is uh, in a form of a byte. So as you can see, this the output is in a form of a byte. And this is going into a throttle block. Definitely you need a throttle block because every time you don't have a physical hardware connected in your flow graph, you got to have a throttle block. Then it's going into a stream to tag blocks. So basically this particular block, block what it does, it actually converts your continuous data streams into like packets. Um, and and it defines basically your your packet size. So basically, this is this is what a stream to tag the stream block is. Now the next step is is your OFDM transmitter. So before you even modulate the, your signal, you gotta have an OFDM a transmitter. And let's get into the property of this particular transmitter, OFDM transmitter. So first of all, the first thing that you are seeing is actually your FFT length. So basically, this FFT length is actually defining your uh, your subcarriers basically and this is being controlled by this variable so i'm using about 64 subcarriers uh, so you can you can you can use however many you want now the next step is is actually your cyclic prefix length and this cyclic prefix prefix length is actually there and 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 this will help you actually fight uh, intersymbol interferences and this is basically it's added is basically so so your FFT length let's say this is 64 so 64 divided by 4 that would give you a prefix length of about 16 so this is sort of like uh, you're, you're taking 16 samples and and 16 samples is being added into each of your OFDM symbols and this this basically this cyclic prefix this is sort of like you can you can you can think of it like um, some additional bits which are being added to 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 avoid intersymbol interferences. All right, so they, that's the basic idea behind this. Now a length tag. This is same thing as your uh, this. This 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 is the key. So I'm using actually 12. So length tag name is basically 12, and the packet length that we're using is actually 12, and I'm just calling it some variable name called key. Now the next thing is occupied carrier signal. Um, now what these signals are, uh, these are specific subcarriers that you want to use. So this, this, this number, some, these are some of the specific subcarriers that you want to use, and these are for your data. Uh, so that's what occupied carrier signal is. Now the next thing is actually a pilot pilot carriers, and these are some of the carriers which is just specifically being used for 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 synchronization and 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 these are some reserve channels which are only dedicated to be used for synchronization purposes and things like that and the next thing is uh, these are pilot symbols these are the symbols which are dedicatedly used for for pilot symboling like for example for your channel estimation and this will help you sort of like in in multi path fade, fading effect and things like that so, so this is basically this will help you to uh, help the receiver to correct the phase and frequency offsets and things like that, and and 
and and and and that's about it that's that's all you need to know and the next thing is the header the the header part of your 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 packet is going to be modulated using bpsk while your payload your actual data this is going to be modulated um, uh, using qpsk or you can choose higher modulation schemes you want so that's the basic idea these are the couple of things that you need to know regarding this uh, ofdm so FFT leg basically defining subcarrier. This will help you prevent ISI, intersymbol interferences, occupied carrier. These are the carriers that you're going to use uh, to modulate your data. Pilot carriers. These are the data that will help you. Uh, these are uh, for for uh, for channel synchronization and things like that. And you have these pilot symbols, which are going to help you uh, do the. Uh, phase correction and and frequency offset and things like that at the receiving end. So these are the three four major components and uh, in OFDM transmitter. All right. So now the next thing is um, you can you're visualizing this using an OFDM. Now this everything is going into a complex to float graph. Now this complex to float graph basically it's it's actually converting your complex signal into a, your IQ signal. Now once you have this IQ signal. And now you're individually multiplying your your signal, as you can see, your real signal with your cosine signal and your cosine signal. You can just simply multiply them, or you can multiply it with the sine signal, so you can get your IQ signals out. So your signal is being modulated using an IQ, and both of them are being added together. Once they are added together, basically you're just combining them together, and you're ready to transmit that signal. So you have your complex signal. Each of this complex signal now is being split into real imaginary signal. These real imaginary signal are being multiplied together to form an IQ signal. And they are being added together, just combining them together. And this is being transmitted. And you can visualize that. And I'm using a virtual sync. And now you're going to receive that. So this was your transmitter end. This was your transmitter part. Now your receiver thing is exactly the same thing. So you're receiving your actual signal. The first thing what you need to do before it needs to go into an OFDM transmitter because the signal DASLI was modulated at the end right here. So you need to demodulate this signal. So you have your incoming signal, which is your actual signal that is being modulated using your signal source, which being multiplied together, which means it's being down converted. And um, so these individual IQs now. Now these individual IQs, so the signal is being split into individual IQs. Now this is being combined together using a float to complex block. Now this float to complex block is actually converting your IQ into a complex signal. That is being fed into your OFDM receiver. Exactly the same parameter as, the, as your transmitter and your receiver. You have your occupied signal. These are the signal that is, these are the carriers which are being used to actually modulate your data. Uh, this is your pilot carrier and this is your pilot symbols. This is for your receiver synchronization and things like that. This is for overall channel estimation synchronization and, and header modulation, things like that. Everything is exactly the same and you're being received. Your signal is being received in a file sync. You can actually look at your signal as well. So let's just quickly run this and let's see the output of your OFDM transceiver. All right, so as you can see, this is the receive signal. Uh, let's open this up a little bit. So this is your receive signal, and this is what is being transmitted. You can clearly see the spike based on this, that this is almost exactly the same thing. This is the transmitted spectrum, and this is the receive spectrum uh, through from uh, OFDM transmitter and receiver. So, so basically, this is how you would actually implement something like this. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, uh, just leave it in a comment section. And this is one way of doing it. Um, this is how I had done it. I mean, of course, I, I've used some help from internet, and 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 this is just to give you a guideline how to, you can implement an OFDM. So if you have any questions, leave it in a comment section, and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.